So w- with the time we have here, why don't we, the last one I wanted to ask you about, of course, is the, the taking the JFK assassination conspiracy seriously. Oh, this right. was a fun one. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, just to cut to the chase, you, you, you've run a lot on this and you, you believe the Warren commission. Yes. Or, or at least you believe their theory. Yeah, you, you don't I mean, they made believe. some mistakes. Yeah. But um, the basic okay. idea that it was Oswald acting alone, I think is correct, yes. N- now, let me, I do have some specific questions, but just to make sure I get the big picture right. I- is it that you're saying there are no big problems with the, the lone nut theory, let's call it, or you think there are some serious problems, but to you that's the best hypothesis because the other hypotheses are so far-fetched that you, you can rule them out. And the only thing that's remaining is it, it, you know, it probably was Oswald, right. even though yes, admittedly, or do you think like, no, the, all the main problems people have brought up, you think are, are handled adequately? Yes. Um, the title taking the, taking the JFK assassination seriously. One of the reasons I gave it that title. And one of the reasons why <coughs> the late Bill Bradford changed the title, cause that was too dull. Um, is that I wanted to bring out this idea that um, <coughs> the people who uh, who um, believe in the conspiracy theory, let's say, of the Kennedy assassination, mm-hmm. um, they're they're filled with uh, the zeal to uncover discrepancies in the official story, uh, but they're not filled with zeal to uncover discrepancies in the conspiracy story, uh, and. What what, I, what I'm saying is, if you take this theory seriously, then you should look at the conspiracy story and and uh, with the same skeptical eyes as you look at the official story, uh, and then you find all kinds of problems with the conspiracy story. I mean, there are mm-hmm. it, it is it does boggle the mind the things that you would have to believe if you think it was a conspiracy, um, especially if you think it turns out it couldn't possibly have been. Um, a conspiracy of a handful of people. It would have had to have been hundreds of people highly placed in the government. Mm. Uh, so that's all kinds of reasons. Hey, hey, David, can I, yes. again, if it's not a big deal, can you tilt your camera again? Because it, it moved. Yes. Yes. The Illuminati don't want your uh, debunking right, to, right. Well, to get Well, I'm out. glad you reminded yeah. me because I am quite proud of my chin. <laughs> um, and um, Well, yeah, on this one, I want you to stick your chin out for me. Uh, while we I'm always this. sticking my chin out. <laughs> I'm surprised more, more people haven't hit it from time to time. But, um, uh, but um, yeah, so, um, uh, that, so that's one. Uh, I think if you look at what would have to be true. And the other thing, of course, is if you were going to assassinate Kennedy and you, or you were an all-powerful conspiracy with hundreds of people highly placed in the intelligence community, um, then uh, – why would you choose to do it in that particular way? That's one of my arguments, you know, is that the, mm-hmm. the idea, you know, uh, a lot of the discussion in the, and I've read a lot of, um, of uh, uh, conspiracy arguments, uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the arguments are about that, that there had to have been more than one shooter. So there, had to, mm-hmm. the, so there must have been several shooters. That's what they try to argue. Um, uh, so... Why would conspirators choose to have the president assassinated in this way? In other words, multiple uh, uh, shooters in different locations around Dealey Plaza. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, it, it's um, uh, it, it's uh, it's not the way I would do it. Uh, you know, I, if I was going to assassinate the president, as I say, um, <clears throat> the. Uh, one way to do it would be to get at one of the many hookers that JFK had in the White House and get them to slip him uh, some kind of drug. Uh, that, uh, that would be, and he would uh, probably, it would never even be di- diagnosed as murder. <laughs> uh, so, um, right. you know, there, it, it just doesn't, I, I mean, I think the the um, the killing of the Pope in Godfather 3 is a lot more like the way it would be done, <laughs> um, uh, you know, you don't, you don't, and um, you don't have a, an all-powerful, very clever conspiracy doing some of the things that this conspiracy would have had to have done. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, for example, um, you ha- you have to suppose that if they were conspiring to do it, so they they set up this scenario where. Um, there are multiple shooters in different locations as the as the car uh, comes uh, through Dealey Plaza, um, uh, uh, you, and basically you're going to blame Os- you're going to have Oswald as the patsy. Uh, first of all, 
Oswald gets clean away in the first couple of minutes and goes to his apartment mm-hmm. and picks up a, a revolver with which he soon shoots a police officer who stops him on the street. Um, this is this is all difficult to fit in to this um, this uh, this idea that it was due to conspiracy and he was merely a patsy. Um, <clears throat> uh, but but also um, you know. Wait, hey David, can I yes. stop you because you're saying because I mean let me. So I think the you know the the pro conspiracy person would say. Well, no, the, you want to have a, a fall guy because if the president gets assassinated, the public's going to need to know who did it. we right. got to punish the person. So we have to hold up someone and say that's the person who did it. But your point is – You would shoot the fall Why guy. didn't they – You would shoot Right. The why didn't they the m- would more cleanly – Everybody would be right. happy. they say this guy uh, assassinated the president, but he was shot, and it would all be over. Right. And so for the person that says, what are you talking about, Mr. Steele or Dr. Steele, that they uh, they did do that. That's what Jack Ruby's role was. You're, you're saying, though, but it was really sloppy. Right, like, it why could did have been done. It could have actually, I think if you were doing it really efficiently, you'd have him shot before the actual assassination. But he would, the story would be he was shot just mm. afterwards. Um, and, mm. uh, you know, you don't let him, ro- you don't let him roam around freely. <laughs> um, right. You know, that's... Mm. Um, uh, that, that, that. Yeah, because at the very least, he could get away. Right. Mm-hmm. If he's yeah, if you don't know where he is, so yeah, if, if, the, if the whole thing hinges on this guy is going to be the person we pin it on, and we got to make sure right. he's nice and dead so he can't talk. Right. And one of, one you, of the you're points, certainly one of the that's a loose end to have him run If you try around. to imagine mm-hmm. the conspirators planning this, they would have had to have planned not only for what happened, but for what might happen. So, mm-hmm. uh, for example. Um, the idea that there would be someone shooting from the grassy knoll is absolutely crazy because you couldn't know that a dozen different people wouldn't have taken a photograph of the grassy knoll at that point. There were, you know, there were thousands of people around or hundreds of people around anyway, and many mm. of them had cameras. Um, so you would think, no, the grassy knoll, have you seen the grassy knoll? It's very exposed. It's a very small area. Mm. Uh, it's not something, it's not a place where you can sort of take cover. <laughs> um, it's not like a sniper's nest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right, you, you know, um, it, it's, it's, um, it, 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 you would, you would plan, you'd plan it and you'd think, well, we can't, we can't have someone on the grassy knoll. That's ridiculous. That's insanity. Because they could easily be spotted, they could easily be uh, photographed, they could easily be videoed, although there weren't many video cameras back then. But still, there was mm-hmm. one, the Zapruder film. I mean, one of the points I make right at the beginning of this article is that <clears throat> in the period where the conspiracy theory was incubating, um, mm-hmm. the, the conspiracy theorists were demanding the release of this and that other piece of evidence because they thought it would show uh, that um, that it was a conspiracy. Now, as this evidence actually came out, it sh- it was only compatible with a single shooter who fired three shots, one of which missed. All the ballistic evidence supports that. All the eyewitness evidence, well, the eyewitness evidence is mixed, but the preponderance of eyewitness evidence supports that. Um, there's a whole lot of evidence that that has to be true. Um, you know, there is the fact that um, that Oswald did build this this book uh, um, sort of covering of books and did secrete himself in this corner at the window. There is the fact that he, he did work alone on the sixth floor. Um, And there is the fact that three people immediately below him. uh, And you have to remember that the sixth floor, the part of the floor was missing. So there were actually gaps in the floor from the sixth to the fifth and three, three men below him heard the shots and heard the cartridge cases fall into the floor and two of them because the third one was left in the in the rifle um you know there's all this the huge preponderance of evidence that there were just three shots and one of them missed um but then uh so when all this evidence comes out uh then the 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 nature of conspiracy theory changed and it's and it said that Instead of saying, we want this evidence, we demand that this evidence be released, it's now all this evidence is fate. And that includes the Zapruder film. The Zapruder film quite clearly shows uh, that, um, that where the direction of the shot came from. Uh, and um, it c- came from the sixth floor of the book depository and nowhere else. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, so this once the Zapruder film is 
release, then the conspiracy theories start saying that the Spruder film is, has been tampered with. And then they realize gradually over the years that that's not enough. It's a complete fake. And uh, Zapruder was paid to make this fake movie, right? So this, so this is a big change in the mm-hmm. in the whole nature of the conspiracy theory, from saying we demand to see the evidence to saying, oh, now we've seen the evidence. All the evidence was faked. Okay, so let me just—I I don't want the listeners of you know the frequent listeners of my show to misunderstand. So a few several years ago, and unfortunately, David, I—it's been so long that I can't remember the details well enough to like go into battle with you against this. But I went, I read, you know, a few books on it. You know, Mark Lanes was one of them. And then, um, is it P- Richard Posner? Mm-hmm. Is, is yeah. he the one that I'm thinking? Of? Yeah. I read his and then I went through, I was just going through a lot of the Warren commission report. And I concluded at the time that the theory in the Warren report can't be what happened. There's inconsistencies. I didn't know what did happen or I didn't have a theory as to what did happen, but I remember thinking that, so I'm not, I'm not going to try to make that because again, I, I don't remember the details. So that I'm just saying this for the you know right, listeners, right, right. Um, so they know where where I'm coming from. What I thought was fascinating was I had come across a theory, and I saw you reference it in in your essay. So, so assume for the moment that that's true. Like, oh wow, there's these glaring problems with the Warren Commission report. There was clearly a cover up. You know, they they rushed the body out. They didn't have a standard autopsy, even though that's Texas state law. Blah blah blah, and. The one theory I saw that could explain all that without a sinister undertow was the idea that, oh, when the first shot rang out, the Secret Service guy panicked. He did what he normally, he would jump up on the car. And as he was pulling his gun out, he accidentally shot Kennedy. And so if that's what happened, then I could see that would explain why to cover up because then, you know, that would be such an awkward thing. There is a book devoted to that and it's called Mm -hmm. Mortal Error. Um, It's very Mm -hmm. interesting. Um, because mm-hmm. um, one of the things it does, it, the person who wrote, well, it was it was one of these things that was ghost written by somebody. Somebody had the theory mm-hmm. who was a, uh, um, a secret service guy, and then the, but the, he had help writing it from a from a professional writer. Uh, so I forget both their names right now. Um, mm-hmm. But um, uh, it is a very cogent theory, and it it is based on the idea that there was a mis- an accident that. That uh, uh, the he, that a secret serviceman uh, fired his um, fired his gun. Uh, although uh, it's worth pointing out that even if this theory is completely true, Kennedy would have died of the other wounds apart from that. So um, it's mm-hmm. like a sort of um, uh, uh, redundant <laughs> to shoot him again. So so, well, but but anyway, well, yeah. right. But my point is that that would be that would be one way to explain all of the suspicious government behavior and why the Warren report right. had inconsistent, you know, like, you know, why, why would they, you know, get two different autopsy or, or two different brain exams and stuff like that. That could explain all that stuff without it being, Oh, because there must've been this inner conspiracy to take out JFK. Right. Right. You know, that the was a yeah. way government bureaucracies behave. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, one of the things about this, you know, when, this, the FBI attempt, uh, uh, along with others, to frame Donald Trump for collusion with Russia. One of the things is that you get people like um, Sean Hannity saying, uh, "Well, ninety-nine percent of FBI people are thoroughly, um, thoroughly uh, beyond reproach and uh, completely uh, devoted to our well-being, and they never do anything wrong." Well, I think that's you've got an, uh, you've got this vast government bureaucracy that everybody agrees must be secret for it to fulfill its function. Right there, you've got a you've got a you've mm. got a, a sort of a natural petri dish for inefficiency and slovenliness and incompetence and uh, and um, and people's own uh, sort of personal vendettas and and uh, biases to affect what they're doing. So I don't think I, I don't think that all FBI ninety percent of FBI agents are pure as the driven snow or anything like that. And uh, you know that yeah, the FBI did all kinds of things that were not quite right. Uh, uh, but I. I if they had done everything quite right, that would be very suspicious. <laughs> right. So let me just, again, to get to understand, I was surprised because you were you just said it here too, but let me go ahead and read it. You said, um, the Zapruder film, a 26-second movie of the assassination made by a spectator, Abraham Zapruder, used to be regarded on all sides as a record of fact. Aspects of this film were frequently employed to advance a conspiracy theory, 
Now it is accepted by almost everyone that the Zapruder film taken at face value corroborates the lone nut theory. And then most conspiracy theorists therefore claim the film to be either altered in detail or a complete fabrication. So that was interesting to me because, and I know you quote some people, so I, I know that that is, some of mm -hmm. them are alleging that. But for example, um, are you familiar with the comedian Bill Hicks? Yes, a slight, you know not, he, so familiar is an exaggeration, but I know about him. Okay, but you know who he is, yeah. So, I mean, he's got a famous bit where he's talking about the, and he says, it's funny. He says, like, I went to the book depository and they have an exhibit there showing, you know, where Oswald, you know, the, on the sixth floor of the depository. And he said, and, you know, and the exhibit was very accurate because Oswald wasn't there, you know, meaning in the exhibit. And so, ha ha, mm -hmm. you know. But he, he does this long thing where he's like, and so the bullet, you know, back into the left, he's doing the Zapruder film and he's going like this and saying, now folks, the story is the bullet that made Kennedy's head go like that came from back there when those of you who dabble in physics would think something doing this would come from up here. So, he, and, and when you're actually watching the film, I mean, it does look like Kennedy goes forward and then right. back. And I know in the JFK film, you know, the, the Oliver Stone one, they play that ad nauseum, that film. So- are, aren't there some conspiracy theorists who think there's a Pruder film prima oh, yeah, facie? Of course it's showing a bullet coming from... Their arguments are a bit strange. I mean, if you if a bullet goes through someone's skull, what happens, I'm told by people who are experts in this area, mm -hmm. is that, uh, well, first of all, the exit wound's a lot bigger than the entry wound, uh, and the, mm -hmm. the head jerks in the opposite direction to the to the exit wound, which is like a jet propulsion thing. You know, the, in other words, it goes, so it would go back, if it was shot from behind, it would go, the head would get jerked back. That, you know, that's, I think that's been duplicated in experiments and uh, it's theoretically okay. correct. Uh, so, you know, that's, um, uh, th that's completely covered by the, by the science on this particular area. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just to be clear, you're saying that yes, that iconic moment when yeah. you know it comes around, he's already right, right, and then goes like that. You're saying that does make sense that that would be a bullet yes. coming from yes. behind. Yes. Okay, I just want to know what the claims are. Okay, um, let's see. And then just another one of your claim in there, you were saying for those who are trying to, you know, who think that oh, Lyndon Johnson must have been in on it, and they want to, you know say, oh, it's because you know, Kennedy was the, the peace candidate or whatnot. And you're saying, well, gee, at face value, the only thing that we would say the conspirators got out of this was the civil rights legislation. Right. Right. And so there, I mean, I, I get what you're saying, but I mean, in fairness, like didn't rolling thunder happen afterward? Like in other words, couldn't you have said the war in Vietnam was vastly uh, escalated after? Again, not that it proves that was the motivation, well, but, but, but got, more happened yeah. under LBJ than just uh, civil rights We don't know that it wouldn't have been escalated under Kennedy. I mean, right, the whole idea know that, that civil Ken rights legislation wouldn't have been The whole idea that Kennedy was averse to the Vietnam War, I think, is a complete myth, you know. Um, it, 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 uh, um, uh, and, and the conspirators would have had to have known what the outcome would be, uh, you see, I think that uh, you you shouldn't con you shouldn't credit the conspirators with knowledge of the future. Um, you know, nobody thought that it was. Uh, if, if I mean, it, you could say that from the conspirators' point of view, if they they wanted the people who want who were hawks on on Vietnam wanted a quick victory in Vietnam. You know, the, nobody who mm. was in favour of the Vietnam War wanted it to turn out the way it did. Uh, so uh, you know, just to have enough limited knowledge of the future to know that Kennedy, that Johnson would escalate more than Kennedy, if that's true, and there's no evidence that's true. Um, and it, w one of the points I make is that all the all the Johnson advisors on that escalation were Kennedy men. They were all Kennedy men. Uh, you know, that the, 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 um, the, the, this, this was not like, Johnson didn't come in and get a lot of different advisors on the military campaign in Vietnam. Okay. But anyway, it was a minor right, point that right. you were. Yeah, but I mean, if I, I took you to be I, saying I don't, something I don't like, see that there was sufficient motive, and if and if and if there had been a sufficient motive, then my, one of my arguments was, uh, why not see if Kennedy uh, was reelected? You know, you had less than a year to go, uh, and um, uh, the, so it has to be something that had to have been done quickly. 
for some reason. Uh, you know, mm. uh, because uh, uh, indeed you could have had a conspiracy to make sure he wasn't re-elected, and it was very much in doubt. And the and the fact that it was very much in doubt was one of the reasons why Kennedy visited Dallas. Actually, was because the election was in doubt. Okay, so just to make sure the the listeners are getting, you're saying it wasn't a foregone conclusion that Kennedy was right, going to be right, reelected. Right. So rather than take the risky move of having yeah. a you know a coup d'état. Why not just wait and see if he yeah. loses, and then whoever you know come, comes in, then you know work with that guy and and try to get get your war right. in Vietnam escalated right. if that's if that's what the plan yeah. was. Yeah, or, or or if you're going to assassinate the president, why not wait until just after the election? Oh, oh meaning if, even if he does even win, he does you still win, take him out. You then see, you know, um, yeah, right, right, okay. Uh, so I had to convey it's, it's it, you, you did raise a good point as I ne- had never thought, you know, in other words, we always get bogged down in, in looking at the details and, oh, gee, the Warren commission said this happened, but come on, that could bubble or whatever. And you're right. Just st- starting from scratch, if they were going to do it, why do it in broad daylight mm-hmm. or whatever? And I, I suppose, do any of the conspiracy theorists answer that? Like, I guess you could say they wanted it to be a public spectacle to have like a chilling effect. In other words, if they did it behind the scenes and it was poison and didn't look like a murder, then it might, might not have had the leveraging effect on future presidents, like the same, you know, inner cabal. I, right. I, I know you're going to say, how do I know yeah. that? But I'm just saying, theoretically yeah. speaking. I mean, uh, you know, I know people who believe that in this conspiracy theory uh, in passionately and who think that it was a coup d'etat and that ever since then, the, um, the government of the U.S. has been c- controlled by the same inner group. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think that um, it's a bit fantastic if you think about the presidents we've had since Kennedy culminating in Trump uh, to think that this inner group uh, chose to work through these very different people. Uh, you know, I, 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 to me, that's a fantastic supposition. Uh, well, well, I mean, again, just playing devil's advocate, wouldn't wouldn't they say something like, well, yeah, Nixon came in, and then when he wasn't playing ball the way they wanted, they used the, you know the Watergate stuff to get rid of him because in the grand scheme, Watergate was peanuts. They got rid of him, and then Gerald, uh, I guess Carter. I don't have a great one for, but the other ones, I mean, certainly weren't against starting wars, right? In right. other words, if if the if the motivation was Kennedy was was too soft, he wasn't gonna you know give us our defense budgets that we wanted in bombing campaigns. You know, it's not like Reagan, the Bushes, and Clinton. And Obama were against bombing foreigners. Right, right. right. Yeah. I'm, okay. Yeah. I so. mean, Kennedy wasn't Tulsi Gabbard. Oh, right, right. So that, that I got, and I, was, I understand was, what you're saying. Was, you know, it, there's no, there's no evidence he would have been reluctant to, um, to win the war. In mm-hmm. I mean, the, you have to remember that you, you, you mustn't use hindsight. They were trying to win. Uh, I, I, of course, you could argue that they wanted to lose ignominiously in a long, protracted, embarrassing uh, debacle. But that, <laughs> what's their motive for that, you know? Right, right. Yeah, no, I, I understand what you're saying. You had, I guess the last thing I want to ask you about, if if you don't mind, is you had another great point, because this is something I always wondered about, and you're tying it to the difficulty of having these conspiracies, is you were saying with the issue of WMD in Iraq, mm-hmm. so, you know, get in I'm not putting words in your mouth. You agree the Bush administration knew they were at least exaggerating the evidence? Absolutely, yeah. If not, yeah. okay. And so then you you made the excellent point, because I wondered this myself, you know, when they they go in there and they're looking around and they're asking Rumsfeld at press conferences and he's, oh yeah, we know where it is. It's in Tikrit, isn't it? And then just time keeps passing. And so you, you raise the issue of, you would think, why don't they just plant yeah. it? And say, oh, we yeah. found it. Here it is. And so I don't know if you remember, do you need me to prompt you or do you remember what, what your argument was as to why you, you thought they well, didn't, I, they just I, kind of admitted I, I it? I think that, um, that there's a difficulty with conspiracy theories in liberal democracies. Uh, and that is mm-hmm. that um, for, for them to be really effective, a lot of people have to know. And you can't really guarantee that somebody's not going to spill the beans. And nobody has spilled the beans on the Kennedy assassination. Um, but, um, you know, uh, or the people who have spilled the beans are people who didn't have much connection. Uh, and, and they tended not to spill the beans until many years later. Uh, so uh, basically, they were, they were confabulating. Uh, but so, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, that it would have been too risky to try and plant WMDs in Iraq. Uh, and, um, 
and say that they were the Saddam's WMDs. I just think it would have been too risky. And that uh, wouldn't have been something beyond the reach of the Soviet Union because they could just make sure that everybody was silenced. But I think it's very difficult to do that in a liberal democracy. Right. So, by the way, you just, I mean, you sort of caught it. I mean, there have been people like you know, Howard Hunt and mm-hmm. so there have been people who have confessed to their role in the the conspiracy, but you're saying for those people, in convincing. other words, there have yeah. been people, right, right. And um, I forget her name, but the one saying, oh, th- those aren't the photos that I took. Yes. Uh, you know, so, okay. These, yeah, I, I mean, these are the kind of d- discrepancies you expect to get in any big case, you know, and they're always anomalies and things. Right, and not that it's dispositive one or the other, but I mean, you do see how <laughs> it's like, you say, oh, well, then where are the people coming forward? And we say, oh, we have people who've come forward and they admit it. And you say, yeah, but they yeah, don't count. Usually their they're... memories change over time. <laughs> right. You know, I right, mean, right. I mean, so, uh, um, the, 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 one of the subplots of all this is Marina Oswald. And, um, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, there was a point quite late, uh, I forget the date, where she was converted. She by David Lifton to at least publicly preaching the, the, the conspiracy theory. But up until that mm-hmm. point, she never had any doubt that her husband had done it. And, you know, there was that point mm-hmm. where they went into the garage and and they and she said, yeah, the rifle's right there in that blanket. And the cop picked up the blanket and there was nothing in it. Uh, and, you know, then she realized that her husband had done it. And that was what she thought at the time. Uh, she later had mm-hmm. a change. She later had a conversion to the conspiracy theory. Um, but, um, you know, um, uh, the, usually the conspiracy theory people say that um, Oswald didn't really have that rifle and never bought it. And that, uh, of course, he bought it under a fake mm-hmm. name. So they say Lydell, I think, that was the fake name, uh, was not really Oswald. Um, but I mean, you know, there's there's so many things about this that are that would be very strange if that was true. Uh, you know that um, that Oswald uh, tried to shoot uh, that right wing general, the retired general, um, and mm-hmm. um, and missed. Uh, put a put a bullet hole in his front door or front window or whatever it was. Um, and um, you know, the, there's all those things that go to make a pretty coherent picture of Oswald as this guy who was. Had assassination on his mind, you know. Right, right. Okay, and I was jotting notes to myself when I just want to make sure that the the listeners got your point about the WMD. Your your point was, even though one might have certainly put wouldn't put it past them morally, that why wouldn't yeah. the Bush administration just tell people, okay, well we're kind of in a pickle here. We just invaded a country because of alleged WMD. Let's at least plant something. And you're saying because if they were to do that somebody might say something or yeah, either, right. somebody might catch it on film, you know, pull their it phone would be out. Difficult and take, take to do that in a way where yeah. uh, hundreds of people wouldn't know that something very strange had happened. And uh, right. that would okay. be too, make it too risky. Okay. And so in the relevance obviously is to say, so if in a situation like that, instead they decided it would be better for us just to admit we invaded a country because we screwed up. Right. You know, well, they of course, they, up. I others, mean, others but also, of course, they used double talk and equivocation, you know. I mm-hmm. mean, they right. didn't admit that they'd screwed up for a long time, you know. This, um, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, you see, it's not just whether there were WMD there, but whether they had good evidence there were WMD there. And, this, of course, they, right. they mm-hmm. were claiming afterwards that, well, it looked very much as though there were. Well, of course, it didn't look. That, that's precisely the right. way. It didn't look that way. The experts mm-hmm. were unanimous in saying that there were no WMDs there uh, mm-hmm. before the invasion. Uh, but um, after the invasion, they said, well, we, you know, it's an innocent mistake. We thought the WMDs yeah. there. But your your point, which is I think is a very strong one, is to say – we all can agree, you know, even those of us who hate the U.S. federal government or the people running it, you know, think they're a bunch of killers and whatnot or liars. In that situation, clearly they decided, okay, the way we're going to play this is, just, you know, to not fabricate it because that's too risky, right. that has too many right. downsides, even though that were, they were in a pickle. So likewise, you're saying you can't just assume it's real simple just to say, oh, if you're, you know, the deep state, you can just – you can tell prosecutors to do this. You can just, you know, have FBI guys do this. You can just, da, 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 you know, buy off a medical examiner that 
when there's more and more people that you need to bring in and it's, yes. it gets yes. harder to maintain. So I, I do yes. think that that, you know, that that is a good point uh, that you bring up there. Okay. Well, I, I think this is a good point to, to wrap up the conversation. Uh, folks, this is Bob Murphy show.com slash one fifty one. If you want to see links to everything we've been talking about, the book we've been discussing is the mystery of fascism. My guest has been David Ramsey Steele. Uh, David, thanks so much for your time. Thank you for having me. All right, and we'll uh, give links to all that stuff, folks, and we'll catch you next time.